Uh, hello everyone, it's Pete here. In this video I'm going to be building this lovely, lovely Kyosho Beetle. I'm going to show all of the build process in this video, but I'm not going to mention every last little screw and nut because the instructions are really good with this and easy to follow. Step 1 is the front of the chassis and we're opening parts bag A. We're also going to open the plastic parts bag. For step 1 we need this plastic part. You can easily identify the plastic parts by the number of the parts tree and also the number of the individual part itself. Also with the nuts and screws they give you a life size picture of these so you can check you got the right ones. Now there's a lot of metal screws tapping into a metal thread on this kit. I'm not going to mention it every single time but I'm going to use thread lock on all of these. The only thing to note about a thread lock is to make sure you don't get it on the plastic parts because it will disintegrate them. Now there is actually a bottle of thread lock in this kit but it's in parts bag D so if you haven't got any then I'd go and open that now and start using it at step 1. This step is pretty simple just make sure with that plastic part that the pointy end is pointing forwards. Step 2 is the first part of building the servo saver. Not much to say about this just make sure everything's done up tight. Step 3 is completing the servo saver. This is quite tricky actually because there's a spring in here and you're trying to keep it pushed together at the same time as getting this e-clip on. It's sort of quite awkward. Once you have got it together make sure it's working and springing back to the centre. Step 4 is the servo saver mount. With this you need to tighten the SC244 body mount part onto the lock nut in such a way there's enough play for the steering to work. Step 5, we're attaching more bits to the chassis and we're opening parts bag B. You need to line up the marks on the suspension bar part with the marks on these little brackets. I couldn't get these on with my hand, I needed to use a wrench. Make sure the second one goes on at the same angle. This goes on with the ends angled towards the front. Now even when this is screwed together the SC206 bracket parts don't actually touch the chassis rails so just make sure they're tightened up evenly. Now on my turbo scorpion despite using thread lock these screws did actually shake loose so I'm going to do a little mod to this in a minute. Step 6 is putting the diff gear into the gearbox. Now this comes pre-assembled but I want to take it apart to see if there's enough grease in here. There is a bit of grease but it's clumped in the middle, it's not really coating the gear so I'm going to put a bit more in. I did the screws up fully tight and it did feel a bit notchy so I've undone them a little bit. After the event I discovered they give you a spare gasket with this so if I had to put the gasket in that might have made a bit more space for the gears. This isn't actually part of this step but I just wanted to make sure there's one thread lock on the spindle of this centre gear because that could cause problems if it comes loose. So I might as well put some grease on the gears while I'm in here which they actually do a bit later. The diff gear then needs installing with a bearing on each side. Now the first time I put this together this wasn't spinning freely and what I did was to take it out and seat the bearings better on the outside of the differential. Step 7 is the rear shock stay, nothing complicated here. Just put a bit of grease around the top of the gearbox to seal it up better before I put the lid on. Now eagle eyed viewers will notice that the hardware from the kit is all black and there's a silver nut here. Basically I'd lost the one from the kit somehow, I did find it later. Step 8 is installing the motor. You get a choice of gear ratios here and I'm using the higher gear ratio with the 31 tooth pinion. I'm going to be using this Absima Thrust 3421 kV brushless motor for this. If you want to use the 28 tooth motor pinion then you need to use the 41 tooth spur gear and that is included in the kit. Step 9 is building the rear roll cage and we're opening bag C. There's nothing very complicated happening here. Step 
then is attaching the gearbox to the chassis. Now do you remember me talking about these screws shaking loose on the Turbo Scorpion? Well the mod I'm going to do is just put screws in that are a little bit longer and put a lock nut on the top of these. Step 11 is putting oil in the shocks. Now these come pre-assembled so you need to take them to bits to get the oil in. One thing I only noticed after I'd finished was that you're supposed to change these piston tops for the ones they supply in the kit. Seemed to all work fine anyway. Before you do this up fully you just need to push this down to get rid of the excess oil then you use the special tool on the end of the spanner to tighten it up that seems to be working fine so I'll just do the others the same the rear shocks are the longer ones and so make sure you put the right springs back on because they are different to the front ones step 12 is putting on the rear suspension arms it's showing an 8mm distance to the top of the ball connector and once that's right just use the side spanner to tighten up the lock nut. Step 13 are the rear suspension posts. With this step really look at the diagram carefully and get the right screws and the right bits because I did do this wrong initially. These posts are only going in temporarily. They get put in properly on the next step when we put the suspension arms on. They just need to be there to make sure these mounts are in the right place while we tighten them up. Step 14 is putting on the rear suspension and the drive shafts. Step 15 is putting on the rear shocks. Step 16 is attaching the roll bar. These plastic bars slide onto the metal bars. Make sure they go the right way around so you've got the triangular hole on the inside edge. The metal bar attaches to these two holes on the chassis. Then the plastic bars attach to the rear cage here. Step 17 is building up the front suspension arms. If these bits don't move freely then undo the nut a little bit until they do. Step 18 is attaching the steering knuckles and we're opening parts bag D. Like I was saying before, this is the stage where you get the thread lock. Now I think you should get it at the beginning and put it on almost everything. With this step it's just a matter of studying the diagram and making sure you've got everything the right way round and the right way up. Step 19 is what they call in the front caster lock and I think it's the only place they mention thread lock. Step 20 is putting the ends on some tie rods. You can use the little tools they give you to make this a bit easier. Step 21 is attaching the front suspension to the car. There's quite a lot going on here, you really need to pay attention to what goes where and which way up everything is. Step 22 we're setting the angle of the caster locks. Basically you need to rotate that part until the steering rod is about 3 or 4 millimeters above the chassis and then lock it with the grub screw. 
So you just do it up loosely to start with and then tighten it up once you've got the angle right. Once you've got one side done, just do the other side at the same angle and that's that done. Step 23 is attaching the front bumper. You need to choose between the big flat wide one or the smaller one. I'm going with the smaller one because I think it gives more of a scale look. Step 24 is the radio box. Now this is where I'm going to deviate quite a bit from the instructions because of the electronics that I'm using. So I'll put these two holes in, the round ones for the motor wires and the square ones for the switch. Normally the motor wires would go through that hole underneath but I just couldn't make it work with my brushless set. I've also put a couple of holes under here which are for running a cable tie over the ESC to make sure it doesn't fall out. So back to the standard build, we just need to attach a few metal bits to the box. Step 25 is installing the steering servo. I've just hooked up the electronics so I can centre this. There are a couple of spaces you can use if your servo is a bit too tall to fit otherwise. Now mine wasn't too tall but I did end up putting those spaces in later just to give myself a bit more clearance with the steering arm. Step 26 is attaching the radio box to the chassis. They don't mention it but it's a good idea to get your motor wires threaded through. My motor wires are going through that extra hole that I made earlier. Step 27 is putting in the ESC and the receiver. Like I was saying earlier, the ESC I'm using is quite a bit bigger than the standard one and this is the only way I could really find to make it fit. And it's not only the size of the ESC that's the problem, it's the wires and the bullet plugs on them and everything and getting everything to work properly. I'm just putting the cable tie around through those extra holes that I did. So that's not going to go anywhere. So you might be able to see the problem you'd have getting these wires and plugs underneath the ESC like you do in the standard build. The receiver just sticks on the top there and then I'm going to plug it all in and see if it works. Okay, that all seems fine, so I just need to tidy up the wires a little bit. I'm just running a big cable tie through here to hold most of the wires down. Step 28 is mounting the aerial. Again, this is a bit different on my build because of the oversized ESC. Also, the switch would normally go on this part, but I've got that behind the ESC. You can see it doesn't fit over the ESC like it should do. What I've done is to cut it down and it's going to fit behind the ESC. So it just fits in like that and it does mean I'm going to have to put an extra hole in the chassis cover later. Step 29 is building up the steering rod and the servo horn. The main thing to note is you need the servo horn to match your servo. I've got a 23 tooth spline on my servo. Now I'm deviating from the instructions a bit and putting the ball connector on the top of the servo horn. This to give me a bit more clearance with the steering rod over the wires. Step 30 is installing the steering rod. You just need to supply your own screw which hopefully you got with your servo. You can see that having the ball connector on the top stops it from catching on the wires underneath. Step 31, it says it's wing, but it's not actually, it's the chassis cover. I've painted this Tami a PS5 black underneath and then PS55 flat clear on top to take the shine off a bit. I just put the extra hole there for my non-standard aerial. You need to push the aerial forward a bit to get this on under the roll bar. Step 32 and 33 are gluing the tyres on and putting the wheels on the car. I didn't do that at the time because I wasn't sure whether I was going to change the wheels so I'll come back to that. Steps 34 to 36 are all to do with completing the body shell. Now I wasn't very good at remembering to video any of this. The main shell's already cut out for you so it's a matter of just washing it with soap and water. I've put in the window masks which are pre-cut. Then I've used Tamiya PS6 yellow followed by PS1 white, PS12 silver and finally PS5 black. Now let's peel off the overspray film and see how it's come out. Okay, so it looks pretty good. There's a couple of bits where I could have done with some more yellow paint, but overall not bad. So it's time to get the stickers on. Now these are pre-cut, but I did use the method of cutting around the backing, so I can use this method of getting them on. So they all go on a bit like that. So I've avoided using some of the stickers that go around corners, because they end up looking crinkly and rubbish. I'm not very happy with the ones on the wing here, so I'm going to get rid of those. Now I put most of the window stickers on as they were. I think it'd be better just to cut the frames out because you'd get a clearer window. And I did end up doing that on the back here. I took those edge stickers off the rear wing and left it like this, which I'm happier with. Next thing is the driver's head. 
Now first of all I used a visor sticker on this and then I wasn't very happy with that so I just painted his face black. With the cockpit piece I painted it PS5 underneath, then I cut away some of the masking and painted it white. Then I put the stickers on and put flat clear over the top to take the shine off. Then his head goes on and the jobs are good. I did go back after and give him some sort of boggly eyed face. Hopefully you won't see him too much behind the windows. This goes in with double sided tape and I've used some Gorilla Tape over the top just to make sure. I would say the detail stuff like this isn't really my speciality but he looks alright. So back to the wheels, the issue I've got is that I've used PS6 yellow for the body and the wheels are actually more like PS19 camel yellow. I wasn't mad on that so I've got these silver wheels which are from a Kyosho Tomahawk. The front tyres are quite hard so I left them unglued initially. They did fall off in use though so I did end up gluing them. The back tyres are really soft and definitely need gluing. Step 37 is putting the body on. So looking good but there's a couple more bits to do. One thing I noticed is that this cockpit piece rattles on top of the chassis cover so I just put some tape on to stop that. Step 38 is putting the battery in and putting the battery cover on. It's got a bit of space to stuff your wires in here. And that is that. Just doing a little bench test of the suspension which seems pretty good. Seems to be quite a soft ride this one. Anyway it's off out for a test drive. So how was it? Well in brief really really good. Loads of grip on the back not so much on the front so it does understeer a bit. Possibly slightly too fast for its own good with this brushless set. The high speed crashes did end up damaging it very slightly. The metal chassis rails did get a bit bent but they've since been hammered back into shape. Just leaves me to say a very big thank you to Peter at CW01 Creations for getting me this one. This is fantastic Peter, I've really enjoyed building this and running it. And it's a big thank you to everyone else for watching if you got this far. If you liked the video please press like and leave me a comment. That's it for now, I'll see you next time.